Hi guys, it's me Karen and I've come to do a picture in this Alice Adventures in Wonderland coloring book that I received as a gift and I'm going to be doing kind of the page that looks similar to this in here. So we're going to start off with this and see what kind of um, water mediums I can use in this book. Uh, inks or ink tents or watercolors or something. Um, the effect that they have on the outside of the books to me looks a little watercolory. So I'm going to see if I can't uh, try that out. So I'm going to just get out the ink tents and maybe some address dress ink and see if I can do justice to this page. So I will get the camera set down and we will see what we can do. Okay, I've decided to go ahead and use some graphitants for her um, dress and her apron. So I have pulled out a few colors um, from that set. The dress, I'm going to go ahead and put a base coat down in shadow, which is kind of a blue um, gray color. And then I took two tones of gray for her apron. I have ink tents out. I'm going to attempt to do a skin tone and her blonde hair. <laughs> so we've got Sicilian yellow, amber, tan, white, and mustard. We'll see if we can get a color out of that. And I need kind of a reddish uh, orange color for her shadows. And I think banked earth might be a good one. So I'm going to sketch those out or scribble them out on a piece of paper here and I'm going to be using a um, water brush. Uh, this, I believe these are both from Arteza. I think this one came with the water color set and, or this one did, I don't know. Found this one on my desk. <laughs> Not sure where it came from. Anyway, so we're going to, um, let's see, we're going to start with her her dress here. So we're going to scribble some of this down. So this is the graphitants and it's more of a chalky color so you got to be a little careful with that. And then we'll take the water brush and I need a rag here. I keep these at my desk at all times. <laughs> I will always test to see how much water there is on the brush on my finger. Pull some out here. You can see this turns into kind of a uh, kind of bluish greenish color here. And we're just going to put a base coat down here on her sleeves. And this is under her apron, so we'll get that a little darker. Okay, do the same thing on the other sleeve. Dress kind of comes down up this side. And then, of course, all the way around down here some stuff on my desk so I can move the book up a little higher for you and or move the camera down a little bit. Okay. So we'll start it dark in the creases. And just blend that in. I have to put some more down on there.
just using the um, drawn marks as our deepest spots. And the apron kind of just stops here. Notice that we're almost out of um, color here, but that little scribble went quite a, f quite a ways. It's the nice thing about these pencils when you put them on a board and use them like a watercolor. They last a lot longer than if I put it on the paper. And you get a really nice effect with it that way. Okay, we're going to go to the apron, so we have to start up here. I might want to do the collar of her dress, but I'm not sure. So the two grays I pulled out are uh, mountain gray and warm gray. One being a little darker than the other. I'm not sure exactly how much darker. They also have two different... Um, values to them. One is a really warm gray and one has a different color. I'll show you in just a minute. Make sure we get all the blue out of the brush. Make sure we have enough water or not too much depending on the <laughs> case here. So we have a kind of a brown gray on this side. And this kind of comes in more of a smoky color, but it's got brown in it also. So we will just pick one up and see what we get here. We want to wash this one out quite a bit. We want some of the darkness on the shadows. But we don't want a ton of color. Now there's a lot of water going down here and I'm going to dry it up. This brush is kind of temperamental. It just drips sometimes. I'm going to learn where to hold it again. Nope. It's just going to drip on me. So what I'm going to do is switch brushes. This one won't have as much water in it. So this is the mountain gray that I'm using back here. Just coloring where the wrinkles are and kind of blending it out.
Okay. Go down on the skirt down here. I'm going to mix these two colors together. They're awfully close. Put more of that on the um, plastic here. Just kind of scribble them together there and just going to pick them up that way. Okay. Then what we'll do, since all that has to dry, I'm going to wipe off this board a little bit. So I need to make some kind of skin color here. So we're going to go in with some tan, some amber, and some mustard. Did he pick up mustard yet? So I just scribbled the three down. So this is tan, this is the um, amber, and this is the mustard. And then we're going to throw in white here because I know I'm going to have to lighten that mess up. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. We're doing okay. All right, so we're going to mix this. And you'll notice that's the wrong brush. I didn't want to use that one. But that's okay. We got it nice and wet. We'll throw in some white here. And then we can come up with more of a skin kind of color. And I'm just going to mix all of that together. We're going to throw in a little more white. Then we're going to put this down and see what it does. If it's the wrong color, it's the wrong color. Start in the shadows here first. It's a little yellow, but it'll also dry a little lighter. Yeah, it's really yellow. Let's get a little more brown in that. So 
mix it up. We'll throw some tan in there. work a little better. Should have worked on her foot or something first. <laughs> oh well. This is really the wrong color. The thing is it's ink and well it's kind of what we get. See what it does. Maybe I'll darken it with some pencils. Do our little foot area here. And yes, we're going to do her face because we kind of have to do her face. We're going to bring that right into her hair because that won't make a bad hair color. Just bringing it in. around here and her eye, her chin, her neck there somewhere, nose, Okay, we're going to let that dry and we will be right back. All right, so I'm going to pull in some polychromos and one luminance pencil. I brought out the polychromos in cinnamon light fresh, light flesh, <laughs> medium flesh, and then the luminance in buff titanium. And we're going to see if we can't fix some of this uh, bright yellow skin we have going on here. So we're going to start off with the um, cinnamon here. I'm going to work on this arm here. We'll try to get this and then we will go on and get the rest of the pieces down. So I'm going to take the cinnamon and just bring it in on the shadow portion of the arm. Going over all the yellowy color that we have down here. Pulling in some of the, uh, well, pinker tones. So we'll do that. Sorry. I want this darker, so I'm going to go under here. And it was just not the best idea to use those color combinations that I used. <laughs> but we're going to fix it, or at least we're going to try. Okay, next color we're going to bring in is the light flesh. And we're just going to go over again all those colors. Polychromos, um, you layer them so you go very lightly. So 
Excuse me, the gurgling tummy here, sorry. There we go with that color. Then we're going to bring in the um, do -do 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 medium flesh. Oops, went out of the line there, sorry. Then we're going to take in the buff titanium and just go over all of it. got a little bit better looking arm there. I'm going to try to erase this area out here as soon as I get the color off of that. Got like pink and blue and everything. Can use that uh, other color as a shadow on the wall so I'm not going to worry about it. That's not too terribly bad. I mean it's better than what she looked like before. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and finish her skin that way, just doing the same thing. So we'll go in with the um, cinnamon first. <clears throat> and we're going to do her face up here. So we'll get the same colors going there. Sit the cinnamon in here. She's kind of got a roundish cheek area here so we'll put some of that in there too darken her eye up a bit her eyebrow In line, of course, her lips. Okay, light flash. you really can't see anything back there so I'm not gonna worry about that part <clears throat> the medium flesh the buff titanium.
I'm going to bring a little brown in there too. I'm going to find some. What do we have here? It's red. <laughs> I want a brown. I want a brown. I want a nice brown. Burnt sienna. I'm going to darken up her eye here a little bit. Bring in all of this color. Okay, then we want just a bit of a redder color around her cheek area. If this red would work. This is the Indian red. Take the buff titanium and just blend that in a little bit. And there's a little too much yellow still right in here. We want to take that out. This is a light flesh. Okay, that looks a lot better than this arm. So we're gonna work on this arm here. Go down in the cinnamon. I'll put all these colors in my hand and I don't know what's what now. <laughs> so we take you two out. I have this bad habit of putting all the pencils in my hand and then just pulling them out. So the cinnamon first.
dark flash the light flash titanium Okay, it's not as bad as it was. <laughs> and we know the polychromos and the luminance, the ink tints, and the um, gravitants work in here nicely. There's not too much wrinkling going on the page. We're going to get some blue out for her dress here. Kind of want a darkish blue. Uh, since I'm looking at the polychromos, this one looks kind of nice, but that's more of a turquoise. I'll try it, see. That'll work. So we're going to go down. I don't know if you can see this part. Looking around her waistband. Just going to bring in this color. This is Hilo or Halo turquoise. Uh, 155 in the polychromos. So we're just going to add some definition in here.
add in some fabric folds wherever you think they need to be. You can probably bring in the buff titanium on this too. I'm going to play with these pencils a little bit. <laughs> Add a little softness in there. It'll be fun. Anyway, this is the play part where you decide where you want the darker colors. The folds of the fabric. The shadow lines. So like here, there's a big shadow, so just do that darker. And there'll be a shadow under here. This is a shadow because it's a curl of the fabric. All the lines that the artist has put on here, you can shadow under or on top of. you can see what I'm doing here. Sorry, just going around where it's the darkest. Kind of using the side of the um, pencil here. going up to her sleeves. Same on this side. Okay. I think I'll bring in 
some white if I have any white on my desk and then just blend that a little bit better. I have, well, I'm trying all my pencils on this paper, so bringing in a Prisma white. And then we're just going to, okay, we're gonna go over this blue here. And then just kind of blend some of that up in there. Okay. So just blend it up, bring some white down, just drag some color around if you can. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna do the same on the sleeve. I want that area a little wider. And if you want a white area on the apron, just go in with that also. Find an area, lighten it up a little bit. I don't know what that is, it must be a uh, hanky or something. It's got a little dark, so we're just going to add some in there. Okay, if you really want a lighter spot on that, get out one of your white markers. It can be a um, Posca, Jelly Roll, whatever you like, and Put a little white mark in and blend it out. Make sure your pen is working. Do it up on the uh, sleeves here if you want to bring a little extra color in there too. Do that on the apron too. Anyway, you just play with it as much as you want. 
Um, I gotta do her hair and her shoe. I have no idea what Alice's shoe's color is. <laughs> I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. So we're gonna do her blonde hair. Um, let's see. Bring in some yellow ochre. We're going to put a finer point on that. Still using the polychromos for this. I will leave all the pencils um, down below in the description box. I'm going to bring in some yellow tones in here. Pretty sure Alice is blonde. I don't know if that's her neck shadow, but I'm going to make it part of her hair. Okay, we'll bring in some light um, brown, so I'm just going to go for some light umber, but i got to find it. Hold on a minute. Raw umber. I'm going to sharpen that, sorry. I'm just going to bring it in and kind of darken some areas of her blonde. So I'm going to bring some of that down on her shirt. Go back in with the mm -hmm, light yellow ochre. Just kind of get it all over. in the raw umber, yeah, raw umber, right on top of those. The lines I just put in. Just tiny little lines here. Going with the way the hair moves. Okay, and then we're going to bring in a brush.
shredder. Um, yellowy color. See how this works. Yeah. Uh, this is a dark Naples ochre. So I'm doing her hair in ochres. Just kind of go over where we have everything that's white. Again, trying to go in the same direction that we are working in with the hair. some up in here just trying to cover up the white we don't want to see okay then we're going to bring in one this is the brown ochre It's sharp. And a few of those up here. Push down a little harder where you think it needs to be a little darker. There are dark lines here and here and here, so you kind of want those to stand out a little bit. I'm going to bring in a really dark brown, I hope. <laughs> Not all used to these colors yet. Okay, this is um, Burnt Umber. Let's see, we'll bring in some of that down here too. It will help bring out some of those wispy hairs down here. see about distress ink um, some scattered straw in that blonde hair might look really nice 
And all I need is a pad for it, which I just dropped over here and can't find. There's a black one. Hold on a second. All right, we'll try some distressing on here too. So I just have a um, blending tool. I'm going to just ink up one portion of it and kind of go in here. It's going to cover up all the white areas that I didn't cover. It'll add a nice another element to the hair. Cool. Okay, distress ink works nicely in here. And her shoe, we have to color her shoe in. I'm just going to be doing her. So, I mean, the rest of the page will get done on my own time. <laughs> but I wanted to see how many different items I can bring in on this paper. So we've used the polychromos, the prismacolors, distress ink, ink tints, graphitints, which both were used kind of like a watercolor, so you can use watercolors in this book too. And I think I'm going to finish up her shoe. I'll just go in with the blue that's on her dress. I like Chromos work really nice in this book. And the white Prisma blends nicely with those, so Prisma colors will work really nice on this. So far, everything I've used worked really nice in here. So, I'm going to end the video. And like I said, I will just finish up blending all this up. Leave a um, picture of what she looks like all finished. I'm kind of glad her hair or her skin at least turned out a little better than it did before. Blend that in up there with the white too. Trying to get rid of some of that yellow there. I mean it's her hair so grab the darkest and just bring down some of her hair. Cover that up. Anyway, I'll give her a blue eye too. How's that? She's got a little eye there. A little blue in there and then a little highlight and a black. Drew up her eyelashes a little better. I'll take a picture of her and I'll uh, show you what she looks like. Just add a few extra little lines on her. And Thanks for watching, guys. It's always fun to do a first page in a book and see what kind of mediums used in it. So thanks for watching and I will see you in another video. Thanks for uh, subscribing, liking my videos, and giving me uh, you know, thumbs up and subscribing and ringing the bell and all that stuff. I get <laughs> all confused when I start talking about that. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Take care, everyone. Bye now.